हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल लॉजिक मेडिको इफ यू न्यू टू माय चैनल काइंडली सब्सक्राइब टू माय चैनल एंड एट द एंड ऑफ द वीडियो डोंट फॉरगेट टू प्रेस द थम्स अप बटन एंड लाइक दिस वीडियो काइंडली रेकमेंड दिस वीडियो टू योर फैमिली एंड फ्रेंड्स तो सो इंटरेस्टेड इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग द लॉजिक बिहाइंड द मेडिसिन ओके सो टूडेज इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक इज द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द फोर गट with correlation with its blood supply either you should understand the blood supply or the development any one clearly so that you can make out the other one very easily so what is this four gut it is that part of the yolk sac which is present within the head fold of the embryo after the formation of the folding of the embryo which occurs at fourth week of intrauterine life this four gut will contribute to the following structures in the abdomen there are other structures which the four gut contributes right from the oral cavity till the esophagus for time being i limit myself to the derivatives of four gut in the abdomen we can see the lower end of the esophagus the entire stomach and the duodenum up to the opening of the common bile duct okay so from here develops hepatic bud endodermal derivative so liver grows from the hepatic bud cystic bud so gallbladder comes from the cystic bud the proximal portion becomes extra hepatic biliary apparatus also at this level there will be two buds initially the ventral and dorsal pancreatic bud which will join together to form the pancreas you can see one more video of mine in which you can see the development of the liver development of the gallbladder development of the pancreas individually also all these derivatives are from endoderm only the mucosa is coming from the endoderm and these glands are budding out of the endoderm the remaining layer are developed from the splanchnopleuric layer of the mesoderm talking of the mesoderm in the dorsal mesogastrium there will be in the dorsal mesogastrium is a fold of peritoneum on the dorsal aspect of stomach within that there will be some multiple approximately 5 to 7 lobules they are called splenic lobules they will unite with one another to contribute to the this organ called as spleen please remember spleen is not developed from endoderm it is developed from the mesoderm which mesoderm the mesoderm of the dorsal mesogastrium remaining all derivatives are from endoderm okay this is about the development of four gut or the four gut derivatives i repeat for convenience the lower end of the esophagus the stomach the duodenum that includes the first part and second part up to the opening of the common bile duct in addition to this the endodermal derivatives are liver from the hepatic bud gall bladder from the cystic bud extra hepatic biliary apparatus and ventral and dorsal pancreatic bud which give rise to the pancreas at the same level even the mesoderm which forms splenic lobules multiple splenic lobule joins together to give us to spleen so one of that fails to unite it will form a notch that's called splenic notch okay so this is a summary of the development of the foregut now let's understand the blood supply of the foregut see the blood supply of the foregut is mainly by an artery called as celiac artery this celiac artery is a ventral branch okay it's a branch of abdominal aorta so this celiac artery splits up into three arteries what are they towards the left side left gastric artery i've written number 1 over there left gastric artery and one of the artery which runs tortuously behind the stomach to reach the spleen so it will be called as splenic artery because it's mainly supplying the spleen so this is the second branch i've written there second branch and the third branch is common hepatic artery hepato means liver in addition to liver it supplies many other things that's why therefore it's called as common hepatic artery this is usually a three marker question what are the branches of celiac artery answer is number 1 left gastric artery number 2 splenic artery supplying the spleen number 3 common hepatic artery in addition to liver it supplies various other things which we'll see in detail so coming to the first one left gastric artery is the first branch of the celiac artery it goes on to the left side therefore called like that and supplies the stomach which curvature lesser curvature of stomach okay if a teacher comes to a student's home 
so they will give coffee or anything like that or a guest comes you will give coffee like that just think the esophagus is a guest for the stomach so what happens this left gastric artery will give one branch a bit of coffee for the guest like atithi devo bhav okay so it is like honoring the guest so this is called as esophageal branch of left gastric artery so that is about the left gastric artery next coming to the splenic artery splenic artery you can see that it's a branch of celiac artery or the celiac trunk it runs tortuously behind the stomach on the upper border of pancreas to reach spleen and then supply the spleen why it is tortuous because when you eat food stomach acts to expand right when it is expanding if the artery was to be straight it will rupture and when you eat food behind the stomach there is some artery bleeding which should not happen right so therefore splenic artery is tortuous that is the first point this splenic artery when it is running on the upper border of pancreas it will give multiple pancreatic branches supplying the pancreas then when it comes to this corner that is the left end of the hypochondriac region it will give one artery left gastroepiploic artery it supplies the greater curvature of stomach and the greater momentum left gastroepiploic artery also certain tiny branches which supplies the fundus of stomach is called as short gastric artery arteries it's actually so splenic artery what it supplies definitely spleen but in addition to spleen multiple branches goes to supply the pan pancreas it's called pancreatic branches then this one left gastroepiploic artery which supplies the greater curvature of stomach and greater momentum then short gastric arteries many in number supplying the fundus of stomach ultimately splenic artery has to supply spleen that is basic understanding okay so that is the fate of splenic artery last but not the least the common hepatic artery coming towards the right this one number 3 common hepatic artery it's a branch of celiac artery this common hepatic artery is running on the in the upper part of the duodenum and the pylorus of stomach in the lesser rumentum okay this common hepatic artery when it turns upwards it supplies only liver so we call it as proper hepatic artery this proper hepatic artery will split up into two branch because liver has got two lobes so this is the right branch supplying the right lobe and that will be the left branch supplying the left lobe so next to the right lobe we have one organ called as gall bladder so this is gall bladder is also called cysto so the right hepatic artery will give cystic artery so i repeat proper hepatic artery splits up into right branch supplying the right lobe of liver and the left branch supplying the left lobe of liver below the right lobe of liver is the gall bladder so the right hepatic artery the right branch of hepatic artery will give cystic artery which supplies the gall bladder come to the common hepatic artery will give one branch supplying the lower part of the lesser curvature if this is the left gastric artery this is coming from right side now because hepatic artery common hepatic is on the right side of the body so it will be called right gastric artery because it is coming from right side so both this left gastric artery and right gastric artery will anastomose in the lesser curvature of the stomach so that is right gastric artery is also a branch of common hepatic artery last but not the least this one this is called gastro duodenal artery because it supplies some part of the stomach and some part of the duodenum therefore it's called gda gastro duodenal artery it runs behind the first part of duodenum then later it splits up into two branches one supplying stomach one supplies the duodenum as the name suggests gastro duodenal artery the the one which supplying the stomach is called as right gastro epiploic artery right gastro epiploic artery the one supplying the duodenum in addition to duodenum one more person is there giving company for duodenum that's pancreas so this artery in addition to supplying duodenum it supplies pancreas so it's supplying from above also so it's called superior pancreatico duodenal or superior duodeno pancreatic whichever you like but this artery which supplies the duodenum also supplies pancreas so it is called a superior pancreatico duodenal artery that is the last branch of the celiac artery which gives common hepatic then gives gastro duodenal then gives right gastro epiploic then gives superior pancreatic duodenal so this right gastro epiploic artery meets the left gastro epiploic artery in greater curvature of stomach so it supplies the greater curvature of stomach also it gives branches to the greater momentum of stomach that's the overall understanding of that right gastro epiploic artery superior pancreatic duodenum supplies the superior portion of the duodenum and the upper portion of pancreas which are developed from four gut derivatives so in summary the celiac artery gives three branches the left gastric the splenic the common hepatic left gastric gives esophageal branch 
The splenic artery gives multiple pancreatic branches, left gastroepiploic artery, short gastric arteries. Of course, the splenic artery supplies spleen. The common hepatic artery twists upwards after giving these two branches, going towards the porta hepatis of the liver. It's called proper hepatic artery. It gives the right hepatic branch and the left hepatic branch. The right hepatic branch will give cystic artery, supplying the gallbladder. Hepatic branches obviously supply the liver. Whereas the lower portion, the common hepatic artery gives right gastric artery. Also, one branch goes downwards, supplying the stomach and the duodenum, gastroduodenal artery, GDA, gastroduodenal artery. The gastric branch is termed like this, right gastroepiploic artery, because it's coming on the right side of the epiploic foramen, which is a foramen connecting greater sac and lesser sac. And then the branch supplying the duodenum is called superior pancreatic or duodenal artery. If you are new to my if you are new to my channel, kindly subscribe to my channel, Logic Medico, and don't forget to press the thumbs up button. Happy learning and happy to help. Thank you very much.